Hi guys, today is an Ask Me Anything episode. So I have a couple of questions over here uh, from YouTubers, uh, mainly from the Nosmo Creator Group, and I'm gonna answer them today. Actually, I got a lot of questions which I didn't expect to get, so it's gonna be interesting, at least for me. Hope hopefully it's as interesting for you as it is for me. First question is from Martin Roberts. Hey, for someone who has never been to Bulgaria, can you suggest to me three less touristy but super beautiful places you would suggest to visit? Thanks. Uh, okay, Martin, so it's a bit hard to suggest three places. Bulgaria has a lot of awesome places which are not touristy. The three that come directly to my mind are the Eyes of God cave, uh, Prohudna. Uh, so you should be able to see a picture right now of it. It's, it's really, really awesome. Uh, it's a walkthrough cave. You don't need a guide or anything. It's super safe to go through there and it's super beautiful. Uh, the next one is Varachansky uh, Balkan. Uh, Basically, this is the mountain part next to uh, the, the small town of Vratza. It's, it's amazing. Next one in general is the mountains Riva and Trudopi. If you go anywhere there, you're you would sure not make a mistake. It's just amazing. It's super beautiful, and one of my favorite places uh, to visit is the Riva Monastery. From there, you can go hike deeper in the mountain. Uh, by the way, since all of the guys that ask me questions have their own YouTube channels, I'm gonna li list them. Uh, below in the description shout out to every single one of them and also I will leave links somewhere here I, I cannot remember I can never remember on which side it pops out but anyways you you should definitely check their channels out they have some amazing stuff there next question next question is from Cvetan Velichkov uh, I want to know how did you start making videos and what is your motivation I've already talked on this topic is uh, basically I wanted to create some uh, helpful videos as well as uh, to have some fun uh, because uh, anything creative that I do usually help, helps me a lot to balance out uh, my work life which is not that creative. Next one is from Derek Tipner. Uh, I hope I pronounced that uh, correct. Okay, I got a couple for you. Uh, where were you born and when were you physically hurt, injured the most and what happened? So I was born in Sofia, Bulgaria, that's the capital of Bulgaria. And when was I injured the most? Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, I actually got a lot of injuries, a lot of broken bones. But if I have to say which one was the worst of them all was my nose. It was uh, during uh, uh, football for anyone from America soccer. Uh, so basically I had to get knocked out three times in a row uh, in order for my nose to get broken because I'm a dumbass and I continued playing every time my, my nose stopped bleeding. So yeah, basically on the third time I was lying down with some ice on my nose again and some friends uh, came over and asked me why am I not at the hospital because my, my nose was super crooked. And uh, to be fair, it wasn't the injury that hurt uh, so much. It was after that because the, my nose was so broken that I actually needed surgery to uh, place it back where it's supposed to be. And the 24 hours after the surgery, I haven't experienced such pain in my life. It was terrible. Everything, everything was hurting, like my nose, my head. Uh, also, uh, to top things off, I had two big, I don't know, tampons or whatever they're called that were stuck inside my nose in order to keep it in place until it heals so I also couldn't breathe properly the, the entire first 48 hours Okay, so next question is from Mikey McManus We have a similar subscriber count so what do you do to stay positive and keep making videos and do you make videos for validation? Do you do it because you enjoy it? Okay, so th this is... Um, a two-parter with the answer. Uh, basically, I do videos 
because I enjoy it and because I want to help people. But uh, it's pretty inevitable to get dragged down this number game uh, in YouTube and it's some, sometimes it's really demotivating. I totally get what you mean, Mikey. What I do is usually take a short break and just do something else so I can pull my mind away from the numbers. Uh, like I just switch entirely to photography or do something other uh, creative and as soon as I feel better about uh, making videos and just want to sit down in front of the camera and don't think about numbers that's when I continue making uh, videos uh, I know some of you might say that this is against the YouTube algorithm and all that uh, blah 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 but uh, personally I don't care I, I do it because I like I like doing videos and uh, in the end, I do want to help people, so hopefully uh, the videos I, I create are informative and uh, help a lot of people. Okay, so next question is from Graham Cook. If there was one person you, you'd photograph, who would it be? And where does your inspiration, passion come from? Oh, there, there, there are a lot of questions from Graham. Uh, and who do you aspire to be most likened to? So first question, uh, if there was one person you would photograph, who would it be? Um, honestly, I love photographing people, especially when going out for street photography. I just love photographing people and this is a big pain here in, uh, for me in Germany because technically it's forbidden to photograph people on the random on the streets. Uh, and uh, I'm not interested in a single person, but I don't know why the first per uh, person that popped into my head was Obama. I don't know, it just looks interesting to take photos of. Uh, but hopefully I, I wouldn't have to deal with such limitations. <laughs> Where does your inspiration passion come from? So as I previously mentioned, uh, a, a lot of uh, my work is non-creative. It's sometimes even a, a bit uh, too technical and I need to balance this thing out with doing some uh, creative work on the side. I've been my entire life like that uh, since uh, uh, since uh, since I was a kid my parents always pushed me to to study to uh, uh, get good grades and uh, go to uh, then uh, go to university become an engineer blah 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 all of that there was always this creative side of, uh, of me that needed fulfillment as well so that's what inspires me to do photography to d make these videos to do anything creative Basically, I've uh, also played the guitar uh, in the past. Uh, I, I used to draw a lot. Uh, this one is from someone you've actually seen on the channel before. This is from Wojtek uh, from Way of Pirate. Uh, what's the best and what's the worst thing about Germany? Uh, I'm not sure if I can put this uh, into a simple answer because then it has uh, no point of me creating videos for this channel. <laughs> I think this is a really, really wide topic. Uh, but if I have to pick one best and one worst thing, best is uh, standard of living. And the worst thing are the limitations. There are too, too many limitations here. Uh, I actually spoke about that in my previous video. If you haven't checked it out, you can see it. I'm gonna link it, you know where. <laughs> Uh, next one is again from a person you've seen on this channel before. This is from Jonas. We did the photography challenge together. Uh, what is your stance on daily vlogging? Is it dead? Can you still be successful on YouTube with it? Would people be interested in it? Um, not sure if I'm the right person to answer this question, but I can say for myself, I was never interested in daily vlogging to begin with. I did watch a lot of Casey, but to watch every single day a video from one person might be a bit too much. And for me, looking at it from the creative side, it, it's just murder to create these videos. Also a bit overkill, I don't think anyone needs to, to create uh, daily vlogs. Uh, unless you're creating something informative, uh, that is evergreen. As videos, I don't see the need for you to to, create, uh, to post daily videos on YouTube at all. Next question is from David Douglas Stewart. How difficult is to make the video equivalent of healthy but extremely tasty food? This is a tough one. Uh, to be fair, I do not believe that there is a platform, either mainstream or a platform like YouTube that promotes this types of uh, video. 
uh, most of the things that are promoted and encouraged and basically that get the attention of most people are the equivalent of fast food in my opinion so I don't think it's it's that hard to create uh, such videos it's hard to to place them so to say so even if you if you manage to create I'm not sure uh, sure they would get enough attention compared to the fast food equivalent okay so next one is from Justin Thomas Brown do you have tips on working YouTube in an oversaturated or popular genre as starting uh, as a starting youtuber I love the uh, the game I play, uh, but tons of bigger YouTube YouTubers and streamers cover it. Uh, okay, so uh, as far as I understand, uh, you want to do a, ga a gaming channel, which is really really oversaturated. But uh, I don't I don't think there isn't room for anyone in any genre and to say that just because a lot of people are doing something. Uh, I, I cannot succeed there because every single person has a different approach to things and has a different way of presenting things. If you ju just try to not copy and be unique, uh, in the end you might succeed. Another question, this time from Eva Persch. As a German who is moving to Finland, how do you like life in Germany? Is there anything you really love, dislike about it? This is pretty similar to the question I got from Wojtek. I do like uh, life in Germany, for now it suits me. Uh, anything I really love. Um, so I'm gonna go this time in a like more concrete uh, direction. I really love the sweets here. It's just crazy. I, I've actually gained, uh, I don't know, like seven kilograms since I moved to Germany because of all the amazing sweets they have here and something I dislike I can I guess I can still keep the answer in the food area is healthy eating here is pretty hard to manage it's uh, it's either too expensive or you cannot find a lot of things that are healthy okay so Tsvetan wrote another question actually uh, a couple of other questions uh, so how do I feel in Germany and do I miss Bulgaria in if yes what do I miss from Bulgaria um, how do I feel in Germany I, I feel great <laughs> I mean uh, yeah I'm, pr I'm pretty great um, even though the, it's hard uh, at points like expat life is always hard uh, and you have your obstacles I can say I feel pretty pretty okay. Do I miss Bulgaria and, and if yes, what exactly? To be fair, I don't miss Bulgaria uh, that much because my parents are here, my wife is here. Uh, I do miss uh, some of my uh, relatives and some friends. I also do go there often enough not to miss it. Usually when you decide to move to another country, you get pretty much detached uh, from the country you, you were living in. and. Uh, as I say in Bulgarian, usually there are two two different things when when you uh, say you have your homeland and you have your home country, with, uh, which are two different things. And to be fair, I love my homeland. I, I love the nature. I love the place. It's amazing. But I do hate my home country because government is total crap and. Um, it, it's actually pretty bad there and that that's the reason why I left last question and thank you for uh, if you're still watching and you've reached until this point I know this video is a bit longer than the normal uh, last one is from Elena Masvarova uh, why exactly Germany uh, basically it's uh, because of my job as an automotive test engineer uh, I was constantly uh, on business trips here in Germany for almost half a an year and at some point I just said to myself might as well move here since I'm the entire time here and my wife can move as well here uh, because we were barely seeing each other at that point and um, since I couldn't do this internally in the company I was working for at one point I just got an offer in LinkedIn for, for a job 
here in Nuremberg and I decided to jump in. And yeah, I think that covers it with the Q&A session for today. Uh, if you want your question to be included in uh, next episode of the Ask Me Anything, leave, uh, leave a comment down below. You can literally ask me anything uh, as long as it's appropriate to answer on YouTube, I will do it. Thanks for watching again. And uh, if you still haven't done it, make sure to subscribe. Hit the, hit the thumbs up button as well if you enjoyed this video. Whew. Wow, that was a long speech. Yeah, okay, so see you on my other videos, guys. Bye.